Hey guys, welcome back to the Black Filipino TV. Now, I got another one for you today. This one here, where there was a kidnapping for unaliving of two businessmen. And this happened to a Chinese American and also to a Chinese national. Now, they arrived in the Philippines for what they believed would be a routine business trip. Both individuals were involved in the medical industry and had come to meet with their Chinese nationals regarding a potential business venture so these guys just came on business so however shortly after arriving in the country they were kidnapped by an unknown group now the kidnapping was swift with the perpetrators quickly making contact with the victim's families to demand a ransom so the kidnappers initially asked for 687 dollars a substantial sum but negotiations eventually brought the figure down to 413,000. The ransom was paid, but the victims, they were never released. So tragically, and this is tragic, bodies of the two businessmen were found four days after the payment was made. So it comes across like the people were planning to unalive them anyway. I'm not sure if it was Chinese people, but something dirty here. Leading to a wave of fear and concern among the foreign business community in the Philippines. It does, of course. So you think about these guys are coming over here to break bread and do business. It's weird because the business was with their fellow countrymen. I don't think Filipinos may have had anything to do with this, but we don't know for sure. The rise of kidnappings and organizing crime in, in the Philippines. This particular incident, it fits into a broader pattern of increasing criminal activity in the Philippines, much of which involves foreign nationals. In recent years, organized crime syndicates, particularly those involved in online gambling and scams, have targeted not only Filipino locals, but also foreign visitors and expatriates. So they are targeting if you if you're focused on say if you're coming out here looking to gamble, things like that, you do need to look out. I'm sure a lot of you guys are looking to do that anyway. The rise of offshore gaming operations known locally as POGOs. Philippine offshore gaming operators has created fertile ground for criminal organizations. Many of these groups engage in human trafficking, kidnapping, extortion, often targeting farm workers and business people. Now the connection between these crimes and larger syndicates operating across Southeast Asia adds a layer of complexity, making it difficult for local authorities to manage the situation on their own. It's true, so imagine, you got outside groups doing this. Filipino authority has no idea who's participating in this. It happens a lot with the crime in the Philippines. The Philippines government may not have a grip on it, but they do, they're all aware of the Philippines offshore gaming operators and it's causing the problem. This is how the ransom was negotiated and failed. In many kidnapping cases, the payment of a ransom often ensures the release of hostages. However, this was not the case in this tragic incident. After the initial demand, families of the victims, desperate to save their loved ones, negotiated the ransom down money. That right there was a number one no-no. Why would you negotiate it down off of the ransom? And so the people that kidnapped the guy is looking at it like, wait a minute, you just offered me this. Now you're trying to negotiate it down right away? That can lead to their death. So the kidnappers accepted the reduced amount and the ransom was paid. Despite this, of course, the victims, they were done off and their bodies were found shortly after the payment was made. So it seems like they were making a, a statement. This outcome underscores the brutality and disregard for human life that characterizes many organized crime syndicates. So the failure of the ransom negotiation highlights a key issue in dealing with transnational criminal groups. Now, they often prioritize financial gain over the lives of their hostage. This case in particular demonstrates how even with the ransom, even when the ransom is paid, the criminals may still choose to unalive their victims to eliminate any potential witnesses or complicate the investigation. So the discovery of the victim's bodies on June 24th, sent shockwaves through both the local community and the international business world. Now, for many, this was not just a random act of violence, but a sign of a larger, 
more systemic problem with organized crime in the Philippines. The fact that these businessmen were targeted so quickly after the arrival in the country suggested that the kidnappers were highly organized and likely had insider information about the victim's movements and plans. That right there is one thing to where you know these people were organized and it was bigger than a lot of people think. So the incident has had a chilling effect on foreign nationals, particularly those involved in business in the Philippines. Many foreign business people and investors began to rethink their plans to travel to the country, fearing that they might too become targets or of kidnapping or extortion. Now, the Chinese government also expressed this concern. The reason why they expressed their concern because not only was it a Chinese American, it was also a Chinese guy as well that were victims. So the person was American dealing with another Chinese person, it happens. The Chinese government also expressed its concern with the Chinese embassy in Manila, issuing warnings to Chinese citizens about the potential dangers of traveling to the Philippines. Now, one of the most alarming aspects of this case is the suspect is the suspected involvement of organized crime syndicates. Now these groups, which often operate across national borders, have become increasingly sophisticated in their operations. In the case of the two businessmen, it is likely that the kidnapping was carried out by a criminal organization with ties to larger, to larger syndicates. Now the Philippines has long been a hub for these type of criminal enterprises, particularly due to its proximity to other countries in the region that have weak law enforcement and regulatory oversight. Now, syndicates involved in human trafficking, drug smuggling, online scams have found the Philippines to be an ideal base of operations. And that's wild because the Philippines catches everybody. It seems like every week somebody's getting caught. You see a bunch of people from this country caught. Even you see one or two Americans caught, but people still choose the Philippines as a hub. These groups often collaborate with local criminals, making it even more difficult for authorities to track them down and dismantle the operations. So this incident has had far reaching consequences, not just for the families of the victims, but also for the broader business community. Many foreign investors, particularly those from China, began to question whether the Philippines was a safe place to do business. The kidnapping and murder of the two businessmen were seen as a sign that the country's law enforcement agencies were not equipped to deal with the growing threat of organized crime. In response to the incident, the Chinese government called for stronger bilateral cooperation between the Philippines and China to combat organized crime. Chinese officials emphasized the need for joint law enforcement efforts, particularly in areas like human trafficking, kidnapping, online scams, which have become increasingly prevalent in both countries. So Philippine law enforcement agencies, including the BNP and the National Bureau of Investigation, launched a large scale criminal investigation into the kidnapping and also the unliving of the two businessmen. Now they worked closely with the Chinese with their Chinese counterparts to identify the perpetrators and bring them to justice. While several suspects were identified, the investigation is ongoing at the time and no arrests have been made. So all of that, all of that work, still no arrest. There's a reason behind that. Of course, these guys may be organized. Now this case, it highlighted the importance of international cooperation in combating transnational crime. The Philippines, like many other countries, has struggled to keep pace with the increasingly global nature of organized crime. Criminal syndicates often operate across borders, making it difficult for anyone to effectively combat them. In this case, the cooperation between Chinese and Philippine authorities was crucial in advancing the investigation. Now, the kidnapping and unaliving of the Chinese American and Chinese national is part of a larger trend of transnational crime in Southeast Asia. Now countries 
like the Philippines, Cambodia, Myanmar, have become hotspots for organized crime syndicates, particularly those involved in human trafficking and all of the crimes that I named. Now, these groups often exploit the region's weak law enforcement and regulatory frameworks to carry out their activities with relative impunity. Now, one of the most significant challenges facing law enforcement agencies in the region is the sheer scale of these criminal organizations. Many of these syndicates have extensive networks that span multiple countries, making it difficult for any one country to address the problem on its own. Now, this has led to calls for greater regional cooperation, particularly to organizations like the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, to combat transnational crime. So, the tragic case of the two businessmen highlights the growing threat of transnational crime in the Philippines and the broader Southeast Asian region. It underscores the need for stronger law enforcement and judicial cooperation between countries to address the challenges posed by organized crime syndicates. For the Philippines, this incident serves as a wake-up call to strengthen its efforts to protect foreign nationals and combat the growing influence of transnational cr criminal organizations. At the same time, it is clear that tackling organized crime will require more than just increased law enforcement. It will also require addressing the root causes of crime, such as poverty, corruption, and weak governance. And that's a big one. The, the, the governance definitely has to be stronger. Even in both countries, there's an issue, which has allowed these syndicates to thrive. Only by addressing these underlying issues can the Philippines hope to create a safer environment for both its citizens and foreign nationals alike. And that's a big one. Will foreign nationals feel safe? I think as long as you're not involved in those sketchy things, and it could happen. Even if you're dealing with a Filipina that says, hey, I know a piece of land that you can invest in. Don't do it. If you have someone saying, hey, I, I know a great opportunity. You can make some money. You just have to put in this much money. Think about it. Think about it again. Ask around. Ask more information. Because you can be involved. You won't realize it. But you can end up becoming involved in something like this. Just from someone that's living here. And you don't know it. But guys, thank y'all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to uh, tune in the next video. Thank y'all. See y'all next time.